Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, I will uh, teach you how you can uh, map um, supervised classification using a machine learning algorithm on the Erzingen API. We'll be using a Sentinel data, a Sentinel satellite, uh, specifically a Sentinel 2 data. And then we'll use a, a classification algorithm, in this case, a CART, a classification and regression um, tree model. Uh, and we'll, we'll um, uh, generate um, a land use land cover map uh, using a Sentinel satellite data. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. So um, before I start, um, we, we need to specify a steady region. Uh, so as you can see here, we have um, you know global map and uh, I'll just change this into uh, Google Maps instead of a satellite um, uh, background. And uh, in this case, I'll choose a steady region in Southern Africa, a pretty small country um, deliberately. Um, so uh, Swaziland here, I'll just zoom in to where, uh, where Swaziland is, and that will be my steady region. And so let's, um, let's get started. So first thing first is to, um, I'll write, um, um, uh, comment to what I'm doing here. So the first thing I'll be doing is import, uh, you know, countries database for Swaziland. And um, so I'll just create a variable um, called countries. And I already have um, a fusion table. Um, sorry, a, a feature collection here, uh, the uh, boundary for, for Swaziland. So I'll clip uh, I'll filter um, the Swaziland admin boundary using a global, um, you know, countries boundary data, which is publicly available. Um, so I'll use uh, that feature collection. So I'll cast a feature collection of built-in Erzingen um, function to import a feature collection. And I uh, already know that ID. Uh, you can get that from the Erzingen um, library. So US dos uh, else IB simple 2017. So that's the, the ID for the, 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 the data that I'll be uh, importing. And this is a global data. So I just need to subset to, to uh, my region of interest in this case, Swaziland. So um, um, use this country's uh, data and um, filter it by using a filter method, uh, an Erzingen built-in uh, filter meter method, and equal. So I'll need to specify a couple of parameters here. So the first parameter is um, the character, the the feature or you can say the field um, in, in the database in this this is a shape file it has you know it's like a table and it has um, you know fields or columns of that table so we're choosing a specific column here um, and then define that that the specific row in that in that in that column so country uh, and a is the column that we want to use for this filtering so in that country and a means a short name for country name and in this case, we are interested in Swaziland, so we need to write the name of the country, Swaziland, and that will actually import um, uh, subset actually, uh, you know, the country Swaziland. Let's just map it to make sure that we are doing all right. Layer and ROI, and just curly bracket Swaziland. Okay, so let's um, run this, execute that, and see if we have. So we've imported that data and just, uh, you know, um, mapped it here so we can see that it's a background. We can just toggle it to a satellite data here. So we can, we can see that it's highlighted. So this is our study region. Uh, we want to import the Sentinel data and uh, doing a cloud mask and generate training data and also um, run a supervised classification using this data. Okay, 
Um, so let's um, go ahead and do the other part of our, our processing. So the next step is actually to um, um, load the, the Sentinel image, okay? So load, load Sentinel data, okay? And so, um, so I'll create a variable here and I'll call it image um, and uh, e -E image uh, collection. That's an Earth Engine built, built in image collection, which I'll be using to um, import the, the Sentinel data. So, um, so for those of you who are new to Earth Engine, you can go to um, Earth Engine. So, Google Earth Engine. If you type in Google Earth Engine, you can go to the main um, Google Earth Engine website here. Um, and so you can, you can, um, choose um i just want to show you here the, the platform but mainly what we're interested in here is just the data set here if you click data set here um i just want to show you how you can access the sentinel image okay so sentinel this is the you know so google earth has a you know library of data you know large volume of data uh you know ranging from various satellites uh, sentinel you know landsat modis and and there's other geospatial uh, data as well, climate and weather data. So in this situation, we're interested on the Sentinel, you know, data here. So if you look at here, the Sentinel data, we have a collection of Sentinel data. So we're interested on Sentinel two. So you can you can get that um, um, image ID from from that that website. Like if you, for example, here, if you go to the surface reflectance Sentinel data can get you know the image collection here so you just can simply copy that um, and then go to your your script here and then paste that um, paste that a you know image collection ID um, since we have let's just get rid of this okay and so we have provided the image collection ID and next that uh, we because um, mind you it's it's multiple years of data and it's a global data. So we need to do some filtering to, um, you know, fast track and speed up our, our analysis. Uh, and we want to filter by a certain, you know, t temporal, you know, timestamp, uh, maybe a year in this case, one year. And also um, we'll subset spatially. Um, so we'll, we'll select only areas that not cover our study region, in this case, Swaziland. Okay, let's do that. So the first thing is um, filter filter um, filter dead so filter dead um, we need to do some start and end and so we need to uh, define a start date here in this case I'll I'll just say 2020 uh, January 1st okay and then the same year uh, 2020 uh, there are one and uh, 30 okay and the next thing is, um, as I mentioned, um, you know, when you're using optical sensor, there's cloud contamination. So whenever you, you, need, you need to do, whenever you do some analysis using a satellite data, you need to mask a cloud. So you, you don't want a cloud contaminated image to, to um, get into your model, your, your supervised machine learning algorithm, because it will, um, uh, you know, um, make make it will the noise from the data will be extrapolated into your model so you want to clean that so that's what we're doing here we're just uh, removing clouds so we want to filter um cloud you know we want to filter for cloud contamination here um so uh, ee uh filter um that means let that um and so the, the image, uh, the image, uh, each imagery has a metadata information. Um, in this case, uh, cloud cloud information. So cloudy pixel, cloudy pixel percentage, percentage. So that's how um, the cloud um, value or cloud parameter 
is stored and then we can define 20. So what this means is that filter um, cloud contamination. So anything, so we don't wanna, um, so we don't wanna use an image that has cloud contamination of over 20%, okay? So we wanna discard all those that have uh, cloud contamination of over 20%. That means we're just only using um, image that have cloud contamination of less than 20% of that image, okay? And then uh, the next step is actually we need to filter um, by um, you know space because this is a global data. We just wanna uh, use um, only the, the the image that that are covering our study region. So we wanna apply filter bounds for that reason, and, um, and then we can use median. So um, we want to just actually a dot here, and that's um, that will achieve uh, importing the data, uh, importing the satellite image here. So what we are doing here is we imported the imagery, filtered by you know t uh, time here, and also filtered um, for cloud contamination, and subsetted by our study region and aggregated the image collection into a single image. Now we have. So for every pixel, we'll calculate the median value over the entire time series, you know, or over the entire period. And then now we have a single image, a cl single cloud-free image. We'll be using this, this, this Sentinel data or image in our classification model later, okay? So, um, and next, what we'll do is, um, Let's just uh, visualize this image, okay? Before we do anything. Okay, so uh, let's create a visualization parameter. These params um, actually true because we're doing a true color composite here, okay? And um, let's just open a curly bracket, bunch, and B4 here and B3 and uh, B2. So we're just selecting the different bands that we'll be using in our visualization. That means uh, band four of lands, uh, sorry, Sentinel, uh, Sentinel data or Sentinel two data, band three and band two. And um, we also need to define a minimum and a maximum value. Uh, for a visualization parameter, uh, 2,500. We actually get this from the data itself, uh, the minimum and maximum value, um, generating a histogram or something like that. So that's uh, the visualization parameter. Uh, then let's add the data and visualize the Sentinel image if it's doing good. Um, and then let's clip it um, by uh, clip by our region of interest here. And let's uh, import the visualization parameter which we already created here. Okay. And um, let's um, provide a name Sentinel 2020. That's the year. Um, we are using, yeah, and so let's close our statement here. And the, the last thing before we visualize is um, this: if we execute this code, it will just randomly, um, you know, zoom into a any place. Um, so we don't want that. We want to zoom into a specific study area that we're interested. In. So let's adjust that by casting map center object. Uh, map center object and we want to zoom it to our region of interest um, and this will adjust the, the zoom level and then we can execute this actually let me change this to the background to um, you know Google Maps so that we have a pretty good contrast and we can see here this is the Sentinel image for 2020 uh, it's, it's relatively a cloud free uh, and uh, true color composite. This is it looks pretty good. 
um, and you can zoom in here um, you can see that um, you know it, it's it's so sentinel 2 has uh, 10 meter and 20 meter so in this case we'll be using uh, you know uh, the 10 meter uh, and so to be precise actually let's just go back to the sentinel bands so we are using um, here the 10 meter the 10 meter and the 10 meter so we're using band 2 band 3 band 4 for the visualization all of these are 10 meter resolution so this is um, 10 meter special resolution okay so that's pretty high res so you can see clearly see the, the you know the different land covers um you know crop type here some just um you know uh uh human human settlement over here and some other natural uh forest um forested area for example um, um over here uh some forested area and also water buddy um you can you can see here some some water and so um so the next step is actually uh, are we satisfied with the cloud contamination i think we can we can do a better job than this because you know even though this part of the image is pretty clean you can see that there's some cloud contamination in the image okay because we're using some you know random percentage like 20 percent so uh, we can we can reduce that percentage to get rid of all this um, you know cloud contamination right and let's do that actually let's adjust uh, you know the the cloud contamination or cloud filtering parameters so that we can get rid of this um, you know cloud uh, you know cloud image cloudy image let's change the parameter actually to you know 10 person and see what will happen uh, we still have um, you know some cloud here how about if you change it to 5% here uh, and we still see some cloud contamination uh, let's just change it to probably point there point five percent here um, let's see still have that cloud contamination point one All right The problem is if you're just using a pretty low cloud contamination, you might, you know, disregard some of the image itself. Cause if, if you don't have imagery less than that percentage, then you, you don't have an image. So you have no data, that's the issue. So it's kind of a trade off, you know, it's, it's pretty tricky to use a percentage of cloud contamination. If you discard, you know, if you want the cleanest 100%, you know, what was now cloud contamination, then that's realistically, that's not gonna happen, especially in parts of Africa, you know, you have cloud cover. So you have to keep a delicate balance when you choose that. So let's uh, go with, uh, you know, 5%, that, that should be pretty good. And even though there's some, you know, very small amount of cloud, you can, you can still, um, you know, use that data. It shouldn't be a big deal since it's, you know, um, covering a small, small part of the steady area, okay? And if you're using multiple years, um, we can even, you know, lower the threshold. But if it's one year, it's really hard to get uh, cloud percentage, um, you know, less than one person and get, um, uh, you know, a national. This is one country. So just getting an image that covers, you know, uh, uh, you know, a whole, a whole nation. So that that's pretty rare. So we can we can, um, you know, um, use this data to run our classification it should be fine um so then the next step is actually the fun part uh creating um you know an image um i'll just uh, a training data that goes to our classification algorithm actually and so let's just uh, do that so the next step is to um actually create a, a region of interest or our training data and let's do that uh, and so what we do here is uh, create some um, you know um, training data points and we'll create uh, about five classes here 
and actually let's just zoom in to where we are interested here. So the first thing to create a, a training data for your classification is that, um, you know, here on Google Earth Engine, this is a, a geometry, you know, generation tool. Uh, you can create a line, you can create, or, you know, irregular polygon or just a square uh, or a rectangle rather and a data point here. Just this is a pan zoom. So let's um, create some data points here. So once you click that, it will automatically generate. So the first, our first class would be, um, you know, water, water class. And let's just do that. Uh, and so let's create our water class. And it's named this water. And then instead of geometry, we want to change it to feature collection. And then I'll call this class. And then mind you, it starts in a classification. Um, it starts um, integer from zero. If, if you don't have that, it will, it will just give you some error. And let's also just change the color to blue because it's water. We just want to make it uh, realistic. So mind you, as soon as you create that, you're just... Uh, you know, importing that into 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 your code editor. That's the beauty of you know the Earth Engine platform uh, for training data creation. And and the second uh, parameter that we need to uh, create is uh, a barn class. So that's a barn uh, bare soil. So barn, and I'll create a, again um, you know feature collection class here. And um, the next one is one. Uh, oh, let's just uh, change the color to some gray color, I think. Um, something like this. And the next class is um, actually crop, uh, cropland. Let's just click that and change the name. Cropland. And, uh, and we can have class here. And then we can do number two. That's our uh, value, and let's just also change the name into something like yellowish color for our core plant. And the next parameter is a forest class. So we'll capture forest class uh, for our training data, and we name the property as class. And the, um, it's number three, that's the next consecutive number here. And um, I'll just change it to green. The last class, the thieves class, is urban area. Urban uh, to map, um, you know, to capture training data for areas that are, um, you know, was human settlement. And then I'll just, um, you know, give it some sort of red color here. Okay. And also just uh, input the class label. And I'll just give it four, and that will be it. We have five classes, okay? So the next step is to actually create the, you know, the each of the, 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 the training layer, and you just click once. If it's bold, then you start, um, you know, capturing data. Now we are capturing, uh, let's just actually um, zoom in and no. Let's just actually zoom in our, our Sentinel image um so that we are overlaying our sentinel image uh when we capture training data here so we're just capturing as much data point as possible for you know the water buddy um we can go to a, another place in our study region where we find we can just use the pan zoom area there's some water buddy here you can also capture that uh, okay let's just go to water and capture that from our sentinel image so we've pretty good about 30 you know 32 data points for water that should be fine next one is barn we just um, you know take uh, some uh, samples for barn area uh, that's pretty tricky so just let's find some you know barn area or just bare soil um, and which is one of the tricky ones, um, but we'll just uh, be fine finding that. Okay. We can also drop the Google image, uh, you know, so that, okay. So these are some barn areas. So let's just capture that here. 
foreign okay so just capture some you know data points um, for foreign um, okay this guys are foreign here okay So we have about 22 data points, so this should be fine. Um, and the next point is just to capture, you know, agriculture area, okay? So agriculture, you can, you know, how you, how you would differentiate agriculture is just, just by the pattern, um, the shape and pattern of this edge. And they're greener relatively, and they have this, um, you know, straight um, artificial edge. That's how we, we identify cropland. So let's just capture. So this is... Um, you know cropland area so let's just capture some data points from this and once we are satisfied with our training data points we can just uh, um, move to the next session actually let's uh, overlay our sentinel image was the, the some irrigated area here sounds like let's just uh, capture some more crop plant over here and uh, drag here these are crop plants it should be fine and the next one is a forest class actually uh, let's just find uh, some forested area and let's map that uh, into our training data this looks um, forest uh, I think yep so yeah this looks uh forest pixels um let's just capture some here over here over here is some forest area and forested area over here this look all forested area um over here Okay, we have a pretty good sample for now. Should be, um, you know, suffice for our analysis here to save time. And the last one is urban class. So let's just uh, um, check in um, to an urban, uh, an urban um, neighborhood where we have settlement. Uh, we can actually use the Google Maps first to identify any neighborhood. Uh, that's urbanized and we can also drop uh, our satellite image we can see here there is a urban neighborhood over here it's a major city let's capture some uh, training data over here so we're capturing some urban pixels and over here some urban class and over here this is all urban area and this is urban okay should be fine we have about 32 data points okay so now the fun part is and then again as i mentioned here the beauty of um, you know Earth Engine is that once you create all these data points, you just uh, your um, you know training sample is um, automatically imported here. Okay, so the next fun part is to actually um, you know create um, uh, you know kind of aggregate this this data points into a single training data set and input it into our supervised classification. Okay. So um, so let's get started with that. Um, so what we are doing here is um, import all of these data points into a single database, all right? So let's uh, create, uh, create training data, all right? And so um, I'll just uh, create a variable uh, training. And then I'll start with water. 
and then merge and then barn and then merge and crop plant merge um, crop land okay and I'll merge that and the next one is forest say merge here that's how we do that merge forest and the last one is merge urban okay so we need to close that and actually let's print what we have here print let's see if um, it's uh, the, the you know the the aggregation work work all the data that we capture worked. Let's uh, actually we can limit this limit to only you know five um, data points, so that we'll save computation time. We'll be seeing some of the results here. Yep. So the features here, property randomly. If you go to the properties, it will tell us all of this class. So if you remember, class zero is what? So it's water, right? So we captured. We start from water, so it's class zero. If you look at this for example it's uh, again it's uh, this data point randomly created um, selected because we limited this to you know five if you just do ten for example we can have more uh, classes uh, from all of these um, you know training data points so if you randomly just check this it's um, again zero class we can say 20 oh um, actually maybe 40 Actually, let's not limit that because it's not that much, right? It's it's not a huge list, so it's about 200 something. So yeah, it's, it's 150. So so if we skip like you know 47 or something data point, then we can get one class one. So probably this is barn. And then if you go to almost uh, the last ones, if you just you see class four, which is you know um, uh, an urban class, okay. So now we've checked that our training data is working. So we, uh, we have already imported the Sentinel data. We've created a training data. And the next step is to actually um, um, sample our, our, you know, the, the Landsat image using this training data. And then next, um, you know, run our classification and generate a classification in a land cover map, okay? So next step is to actually uh, create some, you know, parameters that will go to in the model. And I'll just uh, create a, a variable uh, called label. So I'll input that um, class. Mind you, our, uh, when we create all of this, our, our label, uh, our properties class that we'll be using in the model. So our label um, that will go into the, the classification algorithm is class. And then we can assign that a variable called label. Okay. The next parameters we need to select the bands, the Sentinel bands that we'll be using in our model, and that will be band two and band three, and also band four. Also band uh, four and band eight. Yep. Band four and band eight. Okay. And let's just close that bracket, uh, that uh, bracket, square bracket. And then another one is what, let's define uh, an input to our model. So we will select the image, the, land, the Sentinel bands, uh, the Sentinel image, and also select the bands. So image, okay, select the bands that we have already created a list here. So we'll input that here. Okay. So now uh, the next step is to actually um, create a, a training sample from our, our, our training uh, you know, feature here. So I will overlay, overlay 
um, the points the points on the imagery to get training so what we'll be doing is we'll overlay all of these data points like the water class, the barren, cropland, forest, and urban over the sentinel image and extract the bands for each data point will extract um, you know, the sentinel you know, band values. And then we'll create another table uh, using that. And then we'll be using that to uh, our supervised classification, okay? So let's create this train image. Let me actually zoom in a little bit, sorry for that. Um, should be visible now. Um, and train, train image, and I'll call our input. I'll input sample regions and So we need to import some parameter. The first one is collection uh, training. Next one is properties and label. Next one is scale. Okay, so um, the next step is, so what we did here is just uh, extract uh, the sentinel bands from, from the, um, from the um, training data points. So next one is, um, you know, we need to um, separate the training and validation data sets that, that we're doing here. So let's create a, a training data here. So our training data, um, and we'll create a random a random field so that we can generate um, uh, training and validation data. So train image, we'll, we'll import this data here, <clears throat> and I'll create random random column. Okay. So this will create a random column. And then from that random column, uh, we'll, we'll separate the data into train test and uh, train set and test set. Test set is for the validation, train set is for the training, training the model. The train set um, will uh, train data. We can actually copy this. And so we just um, assign 80% of this data into our training model, okay? Filter EE so less than um, so we'll use the random column that we have created okay here in this step we've created a random column right so randomly just select that 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 column and you know assign 80% of the data to the training random typo here and then there are point A, that means 80% of the data will go to our training model, okay? And the next one, we can actually copy that to save time. And then instead of train set, we'll just assign that test set, okay? And we'll use the same data, but instead of greater than here, uh, less than here, we say greater than or equal. So we'll, we'll use that. So that will create our um, our training uh, data and the validation data. So the fun part, the lot, I mean the main part is to run the classif or to train the classification model. Okay, what do we have here? Some error over here. Oh, we don't have to do equal here. That's why. Okay. So the fun part is to actually um, you know classification model to run the classification model. Okay, so we run the classification model. I'll create a variable classified. Okay, actually classifier. 
classify. So let's create uh, first a classifier and then we'll do a classification. So I'll import the Earth engine built in um, uh, cart function classifier uh, smile cart and then I'll import the training data. So I'll train the model here. So I'll use the train set. The, the training data, 80% of the data over here, copy that and paste. And in that data, I need to assign two things. The label, the label I've already you know, defined this one, the label that I'm using for the classification model. And also, what are the bands that I'll be using? So I'll be using this bands, right, in the model. So I'll be using band two, band three, band four, and band eight. So I need to use this bands of the sentinel image. That's what I'm doing here. And this will create our classification model, the cart model, okay? And um, we, you know, we can actually print that just to check. And the next step is to uh, create a visualization parameter um, for our, um, you know, um, our image. But before that, let's actually run the the model um, on our Sentinel image so that we have a classified image, okay? So the next step is classify the image. So we have our model here, the cart model, and then we have our Landsat, um, sorry, the Sentinel image here. Uh, and then let's uh, run the classification model on the Sentinel image and generate a classification result, okay? So, um, create a variable called classified okay and so the classified I'll use the input image so our input is this 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 sentinel image okay and apply the model so classify function will classify using our classifier the classifier is our cart model we already trained that model so it's already trained so we gave it, you know, training data sets. And so we, we, you know, so this model now knows what's urban, what's, um, you know, uh, vegetation, what's uh, cropland and things like that based on the training data that we provided. So what we'll do is we use the train, this um, algorithm that we already trained and apply that to the entire Sentinel image. So this will give us an image, a classified image, okay? The next thing is to actually uh, display the data. So define uh, color parameters for the classification, okay? Uh, and let's create a variable called uh, land cover palette. And let's um, input our uh, color parameters here. So, you can always go to you know either color brew or html color codes and you can choose you know different color codes if you want to uh, i've already selected you know those so i'll just imp you know simply input them uh 3494 and this one is for uh, water class uh, which is a zero value and i'll actually double forward slash to comment that line and the next one is uh, 96 that's my co next color code 9696 and that's uh, for barn and that's a um, value of one next color code is uh, ff a 0 0 0 and the color code is crop and the value is actually two this one is one okay the next one is a forest class and there are six eight three seven forest and the value is three and the next one is actually, um, let's enter that. Okay. It's our urban class. Okay. 
we can provide this for just to remember what 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 goes to every you know color class okay so that's our um you know visualization parameter here and since we have the visualization parameter let's actually map our uh, classification before we, we we do some other um, more tasks on that add layer okay and um, so this is a classified image that's the image classification and um, let's clip it actually just was uh, our region of interest in this case Swaziland and uh, let's um, open a color parameter here so our palette is already here we'll just copy that the palette that we have already created and we also need to provide uh, some minimum and maximum value and since we started from zero class for water and the maximum class is four, right? And finally, let's uh, give it a, a name, classification. Okay, you can say card. All right, card classification. It's a card classification model. And let's uh, close our statement here. Let's execute our code here. Click run. It will execute that. Now we will be seeing our land cover classification. Okay, fantastic. So this is you know the different colors that we're interested. So one thing we can we can modify is just we can actually get rid of these guys here. Um, and let's just change the color so that it it's pretty um, realistic looking. Okay, I'll change. I'll just go to. Um, this uh, you know HTML color code and change uh, for example for urban uh, I can go here uh, just some somewhat red and copy that for the urban uh, class for example here so instead of you know dark you know black color it will just change to somehow red and let's just do the forest a uh, green deep green over here. Okay, so I'll just copy this one and uh, change the forest class over here, uh, just so that we have some nice looking color. Uh, the crop plant, something like this. Crop here. I'll just change the color for that barren. I'll just uh, go with some, you know, grayscale. Um, some grayscale something like this okay just a gray color and then for barn and then the last one is for water we just need some you know blue color some nice looking blue color and just change that okay and then run this all right so now we have um so we have our um, you know classification results so we ch to change it we turn it a, a sentinel image uh, into a classification using a cart model okay so cart model and I think one thing what we need to adjust is let's just change the um, crop color into a little bit yellow or just yellowish so that will have a good contrast okay all right so let's change this into crop plant okay let's run that okay it's it looks better okay so now we can see it's not perfect mind you we we're using just a, a, only a few bands and the training data uh, is only uh, you know about um, you know 30 you know 20 something data points so this is just for experiment otherwise if, if you're doing real research you need a lot of you know training data points more representing the landscape uh, and also you need to add more 
um, you know, other indices in, in addition to the bonds to improve your accuracy. But just this is this is kind of an experiment, um, you know, with um, an example to show you how you can apply a machine learning algorithm uh, using a supervised classification and training data. So you can see that um, you can see that our, you can you can actually uh, use the Google image. So this is all of this is you know crop plan you know uh, crop plan area. Uh, if you see our model, which is doing uh, pretty good, uh, classifying the cards, and then also the obviously the water body is just the most uh, straightforward. Um, and we have detected that some of the, the forest patch, and there seems to be confusion with the urban class, obviously. Um, so and then the, the barring class. So. Uh, but overall, this is this is just um, an experiment on how to to perform, you know, land cover classification, and uh, a couple of things here. Uh, you know, we can um, do some accuracy assessment, and also we can export the data for for future use. Let's do let's do that part um, uh, of you know our analysis, okay? And so. The last thing, um, actually, the second from the last is let's do accuracy assessment. Okay, so let's um, you know do accuracy assessment over here. Um, so accuracy assessment here. Um, so I'll create a variable confusion matrix. So the confusion matrix is. A confusion matrix, and I'll use the test set. That's our validation data, and then apply the model. Okay, classify with our classifier already trained model, right? I need to have um, double A's here, and. So ear matrix, and we need to have some more parameter here. So for every, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, confusion matrix in a land cover, any prediction, you need to have the actual data and the predicted data, observed data and predicted data. That's what we're doing here. So actual, actual. Um, so we use the class value, mind you, this is the, the one that we used um, when we capture training data. This is the predicted. This is classification. And we will close our function here. Okay. And then that will that'll create a confusion matrix for us. Okay. Okay, so the next thing is we actually need to print a couple of statements here. So print uh, confusion matrix. So let's write the confusion matrix. And let's copy that. So we'll print the confusion matrix, right? And next step is actually to um, close that. And the next um, print function is the overall accuracy. You want to test what the, the overall accuracy is for this classification. So we say confusion matrix and then accuracy, right? That'll just um, give us the overall accuracy for the model. Okay, so uh, we have the confusion matrix here. <clears throat> so we have, uh, you know, created a confusion matrix and also uh, overall accuracy here. So it's 75% uh, accurate. Um, so uh, mind you, again, as I said, if you want a real science application um, for a real project or real data, you need to improve a lot um, in terms of data capturing, also input data. Uh, improving the your classification, but this sounds uh, pretty good. Um, and we have now um, the you know land cover classification map. Um, you know 
literally here. So the last step is we have validated that and just export the data. You might need it to, you know, for your project, for any other application. So let's, um, you know, export the data. Export classified map to Google Drive. Okay. So export function, export image to drive. And we need to just um, provide some parameter here. So the image is um, it's classified. So the classified image, we want to clip it by our region of interest. Next one is description. So the description is just uh, the name uh, as you would see it in uh, on your Google Drive. So I'll call it Sentinel. Sentinel two cart. You can call it Sentinel two cart. And the scale is obviously you know ten meter resolution. And the region is, we used uh, ROI, that's the Swaziland country in the max pixels, um, 1E, that's just for the maximum, you know, number of pixels in that export. It's pretty safe to do that, to define that parameter. Mostly, now we can export our, our, our you know, land cover classified map here and execute right. So, uh, so we're having some error here. So let's, uh, I think we just, um, let's, uh, let's not clip it. Let's test this. Oh, classified. So this is the classified image. Let's just copy that into here. So that we don't have any typo. You can execute that. We don't have any error here. It's, it's looking good. So once your export is um, doing great, you can see that you'll have this exact same, the description sent you onto cart over here, the yellow tasks bar. If you see here, this one, Sentinel two cards, it's exactly the same. So it's just asking you to run that to execute the export. So you just click run and then it will say Google Drive, all the parameter. You can create a folder here, but just I'll leave it at default so that you can see the new Sentinel um, two cart classification image on your on your um, Google Drive. So I've already exported that just in your case, you can uh, clean, click run and then be able to export this data this land cover map to your Google Drive. So that's how uh, you can turn, um, you know, a Sentinel a satellite image and apply a machine learning algorithm, in this case, a supervised classification and convert it to a land cover classification uh, like this. And thanks for listening.